Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So, Victory Road finished up just a little while ago, and uh, overall I thought it was a really solid show. We had uh, four decent matches. Um, the theme for tonight, though, was outside interference. Uh, three out of the four matches had interference from the outside. So, uh, yeah, not, not the biggest fan of that happening, but... I'll get to it when I get to it through the matches. So we open the show with uh, Petey Williams facing Trevor Lee for his uh, X Division Championship. And, of course, Caleb Conley was outside Trevor Lee. So Petey had the upper hand in the beginning of the match. And, unfortunately, that was cut short because, well, like I said before, Conley got involved. Um, so they battled back and forth for a little bit. And PD actually gets the upper hand and is able to hit the Canadian Destroyer. So he hits hits the Canadian Destroyer, goes for the pin, and as the ref was going for the three count, Conley pulls him out, and the ref throws him out. So at this point, Conley threw in the title belt to Trevor Lee. Uh, Trevor hits PD with the belt, and uh, at, luckily, PD was able to kick out at two. And they battle back and forth for a little while, and Trevor Lee ends up hitting the double stomp for the win. Um, like I said, this was a decent match. Um, probably didn't need the interference, but uh, Petey looked great. He hasn't missed a step. I'm a little surprised they actually didn't give Petey the win, considering that Bound for Glory is going to be in Canada. And I kind of figured that would have been an extra draw for them. So, maybe he'll get another shot there. Multi-person match? I don't know. But, the X Division has only been around, what, the last four guys, or there's only been four guys competing in the X Division title matches over the last month and a half or so. We had P.D. Williams, Trevor Lee, Caleb Conley, and Sanjay Dutt. So, I would assume we're going to see some more people soon. I know they had announced a match for next week, a six-person, a six-man tag with, I know Matt Seidel was one of the competitors along with these four, and then there was another one. But uh, we haven't seen Desmond Xavier since he had won the Super X Cup, so I would assume he would show up sooner or later. Um, after that, we had a video from LAX's hideout where they were joking about OV getting worked over last week and that then they're going to party tonight after they retain the titles. So up next, we had the uh, six-woman tag match with uh, Taya, Taryn Terrell, and Sienna versus Allie, Gail Kim, and Rosemary. Uh, this was a good match. Uh, all the women uh, were good. <laughs> Not much more to say. Um, like I've said in the past, the uh, knockouts division in Impact is definitely one of their brighter spots. Uh, they've been good for a long time now. And uh, I actually read before that Impact is apparently interested in signing Tessa Blanchard. So if that does happen, that would definitely bring some more eyes into this division. And I'm really hoping that they do build this up more. Because, uh, like I said, this is women's wrestling is really starting to get recognition. And Impact was one of the, I want to say, forefathers of the revolution, I would say. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, so, anyway, so the heels worked really well together in this match. Uh, they were able to isolate Gail Kim for a good good portion of the match. And uh, Gail ends up getting the hot tag into Allie, which she comes in and she's got, got the momentum and then all hell breaks loose. All six women are battling. And uh, Allie goes to hit, I guess, slice bread on uh, Taryn Terrell. But unfortunately, she wasn't the legal woman. Anyway, had she hit it. But uh, Sienna comes up from behind, hits Allie. Allie goes down. Uh, Sienna rolls her up and puts her feet on the ropes for the victory. So, at least you're getting the six women on... On TV, it, like I said, it was a good match. Um, nothing to complain about here. But uh, interested to see where, where we go from here with the Knockouts Championship. Because well, at least five of these women could definitely be in contention for the title. Um, but 
I'm hoping for possibly uh, a multi-women match at Bound for Glory or some type of elimination match. Or I guess we have, what, five weeks till then? Something like that. So we'll see. We go backstage where uh, Eli Drake is looking around for his couch, and he's complaining that everybody's against him. Everyone is against him. So he, he runs down Johnny Impact and then talks about how dumb his last name is, which, you know, we agree. Um, and then he says tomorrow tomorrow the headlines will say that El- uh, Slamtown is burning thanks to Eli Drake. Um, then we go to uh, Grado and Joseph Park having dinner together, and Joseph Park presents Grado with his first paycheck. Um, Grado's very happy. Park gets a phone call, or he has to leave immediately, and Grado opens the check, and he looks very confused. So I'm guessing we'll get more on this next week. Then we go and see Johnny Impact is the one who took Eli's couch as he's sitting down on the couch talking to Mackenzie, and he says he's going to take Eli to Slamtown. So, yeah. Um, Up next, we have... James Storm coming out to talk about what happened last week with the uh, AAA stars. So he comes out and he says, you know, a bunch of guys from AAA come here and they're disrespecting me and they're disrespecting GFW. And he gets the crowd to chant GFW. And uh, at this point, Tejano comes out and the crowd starts chanting, chanting USA. And uh, James Storm actually says, he's like, no, 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 don't, don't, don't chant that. There's no point to create any anything between mexico and usa because at the end of the day we're all just humans i was like wow that's that was actually pretty cool and then storm calls him stupid and then makes some obscene comments about mexicans and mexicans and he calls them a taco bell dog and all this stuff so it it was kind of weird after the statement he made previously um so anyway he challenges tahana to a fight so Tejano gets in the ring, they battle back and forth, and then Phantasma comes out. So they beat Storm down, and Phantasma grabs the the microphone, and they say they do respect GFW, but AAA is the best company. And so they grab the beer bottle and are going to break it over Storm's head, but at this point, EC3 comes out and makes the save. And uh, after that, Storm extends his hand to, to, you know, shake... uh, extends his hand in a handshake um and ec3 kind of ha- looks at him just walks outside out out of the ring the crowd's chanting for him to shake his hand and so ec3 goes in reluctantly and shakes his hand so uh after that we go backstage where storm and ec3 burst into Cornette's office and they say they're willing to put their differences aside to team together to take uh, Tahana, uh, take on Tahano and Phantasma, and uh, Cornette makes the match for next week. So I, I really like this, um, I guess, rift between the multi or the organizations. I mean, it's expected, but at least they're making a storyline out of it. So seems pretty good, um, and it's giving you know EC3 and James Storm and well, Edwards last week, at least something to do since they're not really doing anything else right now. I would assume at Bound for Glory, uh, EC3 will put his uh, championship on the line. But until then, who knows? Then uh, up next, we had the episode three of Global Forge, where I think they named the three finalists. So in the upcoming weeks, we're going to see them train in Canada. Um, And then we got the tag title match. So I think this was the best match of the night. And I, I, I've been harsh, not really harsh, but I really didn't see much in OVE. And over this past week, I actually watched some of their matches. There are recent ones where they battled like a British strong style. I think it was them and Sammy Callahan versus Pete Dunn, Tyler Bate, and Trent Seven. And there were some great spots. It was just a good match overall. So kind of, it, it was just kind of opened my eyes to them i guess you could say so um like i said this was probably the best match of the night there was a couple good spots but again interference played a part in it not one to decide the match but uh, so ove starts out early and they uh after lax makes their um intra 
entrance. They are outside the ring, and OVE jumps off the ropes on top of them. Um, there, uh, there was a lot of back and forth in the match, a lot of good spots. At one point, uh, OVE hit a superplex into a sit-out powerbomb. Uh, this probably would have won the match, but Ortiz was able to break it up. Um, and then they battled again some more, and LAX set up sets up for the street sweeper, but Santana got knocked off the top rope, and Dave Chris hits a DDT for the win, and we have new tag team champions. So this was, I think, the first match that we actually saw in Impact where OVE was, wasn't was squashing their opponents, which it was good. Um, I'm sure they'll get a rematch, LAX, that is. And uh, I expect it to be like this one and, and another good match. Um, their tag team division is uh, lacking, for uh, better words. Um, I don't know what their plan is here. I don't know if they're bringing in tag teams, if they're going to build people up, just stick people together. But, I mean, you can only have two teams battle each other for so long. So, um up next, we had Bobby Lashley with American Top Team. Um, I don't care about this. Um, it seems like a lot of other people don't care about it, so I'm not even going to talk about it. And that brings us to the main event, where Eli Drake is defending his global championship against Johnny Impact. So, like I spoke of before, more interference in this match than any other match in the night. Um... So Johnny Impact controlled, I, I think actually before I get started, that they gave this match a, a decent amount of time. And where there wasn't interference in the match, this was a decent match overall. Because um, Eli plays such a good heel. Uh, so Impact controlled the majority of the match. Um, so Adonis started getting involved, of course. And like the X Division title match, the referee kicked Adonis out. Well, he kicked Conley out in that match, but you guys know what I mean. Um, so he gets thrown out. They're battling back and forth, and Eli and goes for a clothesline on Johnny Impact. Impact ducks. Eli hits the referee, knocks him out. Um, Impact hits a move. I don't remember what it was. Goes for the pin. No referee. So Adonis ends up coming out. He hands Eli the title. Eli nails Impact with it. Goes for the cover. Another ref comes out. Impact kicks out at two. At this point, Eli was pissed because he didn't get the three count. So he hits that referee. So Adonis and Eli double team Johnny Impact. Um, Eli goes to hit Impact with the title again, but this time Impact ducks down and Eli takes out Adonis. So, um, right. Then he gets back up. Um, and him and Impact battle back and forth for a little bit. And uh, Johnny Impact was on the top. He was doing his countdown for his finisher. And the original referee, who was it, Dave Hebner? Or not Dave Hebner, but Brian Hebner. Um, he's up, and Eli pushes Hebner toward Johnny Impact. Johnny Impact jumps over him, lands on in the ring, Eli low blows him and then hits the gravy train for the win. After the match, both Adonis and Eli beat down Impact again. Um, for some reason, Tahano, not Tahano, I'm sorry, uh, Garza Jr. came out. I don't know why, because I thought he was in some, was he in a feud with Braxton Sutter, right, last week? Um, he comes out for the save, and then LAX comes out. And they beat Garza Jr. down. Conan is getting into it with a fan, and he hits the fan, the fan, and he goes down. Cornette comes out, and he's yelling and screaming at Adonis and, Dr and Drake. And, yeah, it was just chaos to end the show. Um, but they have to build up for Bound for Glory, so like I said, they have five weeks to plan. Um, but overall, yeah, it was a decent show. I mean, we had some build-up between... Johnny, Impact, and Eli Drake. Same goes for OV and LAX, and as well as the women. The uh, X Division title, like I said, there's been very limited people vying for the title, so 
not much they could do there. So, like I said, hopefully we start seeing some either new talent or just more people in the X Division matches just to break up the monotony here. Um, but, yeah. So, I'm looking forward to Bound for Glory, and uh, I'm interested to see you, uh, what's ahead. So, if you like what you've seen here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.